you're a big uh, you you you're a big fan of of fighting in addition to being you know an elite fighter and i know you've you've watched tape since you were a kid you had like those drives full of tape and stuff since you were uh, a younger can you talk about your approach to watching fights um is it you know as entertainment is it like analytical like wh what recommendations maybe do you, in your do your experiences as you know as someone who's who studied tape first as a fan then as a fighter now uh, now also as a coach like how do you look at tape what do you do do you look at instructionals do you look at a competition do you look at both what's what's your approach um so it, it kind of depends on like what is it i'm watching you know like, so i was um, I, when I was in high school, I didn't realize how good he was, but um, the janitor at my high school was like a phenomenal boxer, uh, a guy named Juan Bata. I don't know if he's from Cuba or where he's from, but like a phenomenal, it wasn't Cuba, it was, um, I forget exactly where it was, it wasn't Cuba though. That's cool um, though. He was like a phenom phenomenal, phenomenal boxer, his name is Juan Bata. Okay. And, um, and, you know, he used to talk, there were a couple of you know, kids that I went to high school with, they, they were acting, you know, they were, I would do jiu-jitsu. I was doing like, you know, this gay sport on the side, rolling like with dudes on the ground. Right. right? And then, and then there were a couple of kids that were, you know, were, like really good boxers. They're going to like Kep Yellow's boxing gym and rock band and stuff like that. Like, so they would talk to this, um, this janitor. And I would kind of listen to, you know, what they're talking about. And he used to say that, like, whenever he watched watch boxing, he wouldn't even watch the, their hands at all. He would just watch their feet. Hmm. He's like, you can tell so much more about a guy's skill based on watching his feet. Like, you're going to have to see what's going on with the hands. If the hands are open, it doesn't matter. Bumble what's going on with their feet. Right, you know, because it's like if your if your feet are out of position, you can't get any punches off. Your feet are never set. You never, you know, your if your feet aren't set, you can't punch. Mm -hmm. Right. So we say that, like, you know, your feet were so much more important than what you do with your hands. And that's why guys can get away with keeping their hands low. That's why guys can move their head really, really well. Some guys, you know, can move their head really well, and other guys can't. Right? Because the guys that you know have their feet where they need to be can move their head, they're they're able to move. Huh. So, um, so that just always kind of stuck with me. It was like it was something that I never really thought about. You know, until and someone said to me, and then once you said to me, oh, that makes a lot of fucking sense. Like, why did they never think of that? <laughs> and um, so we used to say, like, you know, whenever you watch, like, if you watch stupid boxes fight, like, just watch the feet. Mm. Just watch the dance of the feet. Just watch how they reposition their feet. Like, if that's, like, the most important thing. You don't have to watch the punching. Just watch the feet. Watch mm. the knees. Watch your legs. And so a lot of times when I'm watching guys, I'm trying to pay attention a little bit more to, like, the, obviously that's straight up boxing. That's not a thing. Like, just wrestling and everything else and posture and everything else. So there's other stuff that matters. But, um, but I try to focus on the things that people don't focus on as much. I try to, you know, look at habits and tendencies and things like that. Like, I try to pick up on patterns. I think it's, like, way more. Because even, like, every single fighter has habits and tendencies and patterns. Every single one. Even guys that try to mask and try to hide it, everyone has patterns. Um, so, I try to, I, to... To me, it's like I'm always just trying to pick up. I'm trying to predict people doing things before they do. Hmm. Right? It's like, it's not, it doesn't matter to me, like, like watching, like, a Tia Dillashaw or Mighty Mouse, or Cejudo, or anyone, really. You know, any of these guys are, like, very really good movement guys that move around a lot. Um, that I, try to, I try to just pick out, like, just try and figure out, like, what they're going to do before they do. I mean, so I think you got to try to pick up on habits on, like, what they're trying to set up. Because it's never, like, it's never, like, the, the, the right hand sometimes was the fight, but usually it's because it was set up so masterfully by, like, the jab and the hook and, and the lead hand and just getting people to move their head you know, probing them and figuring out patterns, figuring out patterns with the right hand comes and it, it drops people. But it's always about like the, it's always about the setup, right? So I think that like when I'm trying to, whether I'm watching for, for fun or I'm just trying to study, I'm trying to like figure out like what the triggers are and what the habits are. You know, so like generally when I'm watching stuff, that's like what I'm, I'm mainly focusing on as far as like stand up stuff. You know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to like figure out what their, what their triggers are and what is that they, what they value and what's important to them. And, you know, if, if you figure out like, what the triggers are, it's so easy to just line people up and set them up and, and take them up. That's interesting. Is Are there any analogs to, with with grappling? Or is it like, is in principle, is it is it similar in that way too? Like you see some, people respond to some type of grip or post uh, and so you can like anticipate that and, and deal with it? Or, or or is it is it is it fundamentally different, would you say? Uh, no, I, I think it's very similar. I mean, I think that for the most part, like, you know, guys are either uh, active or they're reactive, mm -hmm. right? So every position, every every grappler, every situation is always really good for you. I'm going to lead your deal, right? So, like, first you got to figure out, you know, what someone's uh, habits and what their tendencies are. Like, they generally try to lead or they try to react, right? And then 
once you figure that out, you, you know, most people, they have, like, a go-to pass. Mm. Right? They have a go-to attack that they're going to start with, you know? So it's, like, it can be hard when someone has, like, five or six different things they go, right? But it generally starts with, like, one thing. There's generally some, like, home base where they start, mm. right? If you're going to go through a maze, you know, there's, you know, you get to a point where you get, like, you know, a couple different choices on where you can go, right? But you always have to start the maze at the same spot. So for grappling, I think it's, you know, when I'm preparing to break down that kind of stuff, I try to figure out where, where the... the, the the start with the beginning of their mazes. You know what I mean? And if you can kind of shut that down a little bit, you can have a much easier time. But so, so again, same thing, just have it, have it you know, trying to figure it out a little bit. Like, I know, like, there's certain things that I like to do. Like, I like to, um, like, if I'm in closed guard, I like to force half guard and pass to my left. And, you know, there's a couple, there's a couple entries I do, you know, but it always starts with me trying to, you know, basically trying to force the half guard. Hmm. Right? If, if people can shut that down on me, that makes it a lot harder to get all my other stuff going. Right? And I have I have things I can do, but but just like my bread and butter, it starts here and it goes to there and it goes there and it progresses. You know, it's like when people shut down your bread and butter, it just makes it a lot harder. So when I'm watching people grappling or, or things like that, I try to I try to figure out where they where the start of their meet. Try to figure out you know what it is they can do first. If you figure out what they can do first, you kind of predict a little bit. And you you already have a trap set up or a good defense or a good counter or something like that. You can shut down the entire game. If you stop like the first, the first couple steps of it. That's cool. That's a really, that's a really cool way of thinking about it. I like that. As, as an athlete yourself, how are you, uh, in addition to all your, you know, the responsibilities you have, uh, with, with family, with, with your business, how are you approaching things, um, as an athlete in terms of your own, like, activity level? Are you taking these last 10 days? Have you pretty much said, I'm just going to relax and like not work out? Are you finding creative ways to get some type of work in, even with the kids around? Like what, what's been your approach? Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of taking the, the, the chance to just kind of recover a little bit. You know? mm. I'm not like, I'm not going to like sit there and like do this and that and the other thing. You know, like I'm always in the gym, I'm always training, but I'm not always training super hard. Right, I mean, it's so, like I could be a bed out of health for two minutes any given day, right? But it's like, don't be on that two minutes, it's different some days. You know, like it's, um, I've been, for the last couple months, I've been really focused on doing gym stuff. So I, I, the focus has not been on my own training. Like if, you know, if, if Calvin needs rounds or someone else needs rounds or whatever, I'm 100% down to jump in and help them out. Mm. But I'm not looking to do like my own hard rounds. Mm. You know, like it's, I'm okay with that. So, um, so you've been focused on gym stuff. So like the last like 10 days or so, like I've, I've been doing a lot of gym stuff, doing a lot of video stuff. Um, you know, obviously Katie's had, usually we have like, uh, we have like a three sitter that will help out. You know, so like when I teach, I teach like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. Mm. So, uh, we'll usually have the babysitter, if Katie's has worked those, any of those days, because she's on like a routine schedule, we'll have the babysitter come. So, uh, so it's time the babysitter come for like an hour or two hours, we'll have the babysitter come for like four or five hours. Mm. So I can teach my class, and then I have a few hours each day to kind of get stuff done for the gym. Um, but, you know, with all, all this lockdown stuff, I, I just, I've been Mr. Dad. So I've been with the kids nonstop. So uh, I've been able to get stuff done, but it's just it's obviously have a lot less time. But it's fine. It's okay. I'm, I'm having fun hanging out with the kids. Watch a whole lot of Moana and all those stuff. Um, <laughs> watch Frozen about 15 times. Um, uh, so, but, but, you know, no babysitter. So, like, it might, I've, I've been getting some gym stuff done, but it's been a lot of, like, you know, family time with the kids. Which is great. Yeah, no, that is that is good. I'm glad. I'm at least at least that man. And everyone, everyone, pretty healthy. Everything good. Yeah, no, everyone's good. You know, Jake had a little bit of an ear infection, that's why I had to go to the doctors. But uh, but he's good. Um, no, everyone, everything's been good. You know, uh, I, I think all this coronavirus stuff. I think it's been around a lot longer than, than people think. Yeah. Um, I've been thinking back on. We've had I've had tons of people in my gym like in like for like January, February, even December a little bit like with like nasty respiratory stuff where they've been mm-hmm. taking out for like a week and they're not like super sick, not like hospitalized sick, but they're just like feeling like absolute asshole, like, you know what I mean? Like not training at all. Uh, and then they're down for like a week or so and then they come back and you're like, oh, I'm just a really, a really bad flu, you know? And I mm-hmm. think it's been around for a little, a little bit longer. So um, like Joey was sick, um, like back in like December. Wow. We, uh, we went to the UFC in DC and we brought Joey with us because they had it like we went there for like the B Foundation. Yeah. And, um, and Joey was wicked fucking sick. Like, we ended up leaving the event. We left, we left the fights early. Uh, but he had like a fever like 104 for like 10 days, 12 days, something like that. So um, like, I think this has been around like all this corona stuff. I think like, obviously not as widespread as it is right now, but I think it's, it's been around for a lot longer than people think. Yeah, you're probably right. We just haven't been testing, so we, we, had, no, we had no idea what it was. Yeah, yep, yep. amazing. Well, thanks a lot for making time, man. Any anything you know that 
that pops up that I can in any small way help with, whether it's, you know, just, you know, spreading stuff or if you ever do like paywall stuff or fundraising, just let me know, man. Uh, of course, anything I can do to help, I will. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good talking with you, even under bad circumstances, brother. Tell, uh, you know, tell Katie we say hi. Here, yeah, man, absolutely. Uh, holler whenever and, uh, tell Katie we say what's up and, and, uh, and, uh, hope the kids are well, brother. Okay. You too. All right. Thanks, man. Peace. Later, bud. Bye.